We are just after Ramadan time at Damascus Gate. Uh, the Muslims just finished uh, um, their uh, holiday after Ramadan time, Eid al Fitr. And it's Friday, soon a lot of the Muslims will go to pray through Damascus Gate at Al Aqsa for Ramadan Sharif. And uh, we will start a tour together. I'm doing that tour, I'm honoring that tour to everyone that watched that video, um, but especially to Leslie, Tracy, sorry, Tracy, sorry, Tracy. Um, she asked me for the Jerusalem cross, and if you do, if you want it as well, I have different kind of crosses and the Bible itself, go into Buy Me a Coffee link, which is at the description, and you will find it. You can actually write it in Google, Zai Shaked, my name, and uh, you will see the link as well. But if not, write me a message and I will send it to you, and I will do it, do it for you as well. Um, the details are there. You will have a video with your cross, then it will be priceless. And you will, I will send the cross to you. Now let's start a tour. Tracy didn't give me any um, information about her. The only thing that I know is that she is from the States. And uh, she didn't even ask me to pray, to bless it in uh, one of the places, the holy sites of Jerusalem, that I'm doing whatever I feel. And that's how I'm trying to figure out who is Tracy. The way to Damascus of St. Paul started from here, because from Damascus Gate, you can actually reach Damascus, which is not so far away from here. Sadly, it's raining a little bit, but the good thing, it's not hot. It's made supposed to be hot. It's not then. Here we are. The wall that you see to the right and to the left of the gate is from the 16th century, uh, built by Solomon the Magnificent, but it was based on ancient Etching walls, and I will show you at least one oh, pouring uh, one gate, triumph gate from second century AD, built by Adrian Caesar Adrian. And this is the story of Jerusalem, city on top of the city, on top of the city. Here it is. Let's, let's enter. Wow, real boring. I didn't plan it like that. I didn't think that it would be like that. Um, May, it's supposed to, be, supposed to be a rainy month. You see the um, grape leaves. We can stuff it with, with meat or rice. It's such an amazing thing. Then the gate. But a big one cannot go into it straight to the other side. The idea of gates is to avoid enemies from entering the city. Look how big it is. And if it's okay by you, rain or not rain, we will continue the video. Then welcome to the old city of Jerusalem. At the ancient map of Madaba from the 6th century, you can uh, visit, you can see those roads that we are actually using now we see only one but soon we will see the other one the city of today and this is the Muslim uh, quarter of the city it was built on top of those ancient I mean they used the ancient uh, city from the Roman time and the street of the Roman time is and under, if you will excavate it, you will find it. But I'm not sure that the Muslims want us to excavate it. And then you will see two main roads to your right and to your left. That road went straight to the Church of the Holy Sepulchre, the other one to the Western Wall. I decided to take the long, long path and I'm taking the Eastern Cardo. That's the name of the street uh, at the ancient time. Today it's called El Wadi Street. 
what the ancient time that was the eastern Cairo. Cairo, it's the heart of the city. Uh, main road from north, and we came from north from uh, Damascus Gate to south. That part, as you can see, totally not touristic part. But I'm using that place, uh, walking through that place, mainly because I want to bless the cross at all the sites on the way in the Alfie all the side. Oh, it's boring. And Tracy. Gosh. I'm really thinking to hide myself in one of the coffee places. I might do that soon. Echel Berefin, Mark Twain, remember Echel Berefin? When he came to Jerusalem, he actually lived and stayed in this hotel. Today, that hotel belongs to the uh, Jewish Institute. They bought it with full money, but for so many, it's um, a settlement in the West Bank. Although Jerusalem wasn't supposed to be part of Palestine and not part of Israel, it was supposed to be part of the United Nations. Hello, kitty. Should I hide myself from the rain or should I continue? This is the question. To be or not to be. Just I want you to show you that there are so many other options. This is for... Uh, uh, this is a very... Uh, unknown or at least touristic place and I already took it in one of the videos but uh, for one of these what I will take it uh, again uh, in the future I will use it maybe I will prepare non-touristic streets that even the local people don't know look at this sweets the Arabic sweets We are reaching to a very important junction. If you will continue left, say hi to Yasin. Yasin is the owner, <laughs> enjoy, of a very good restaurant at the fourth station of the cross. It's Armenian. See, right there. When I reach the fourth uh, station, then you can enter and enjoy excellent food that from his kitchen. But until then, you can see the Austrian Hospice, which is such a beautiful place to stay. But, Tracy, the roof, the view from the roof is absolutely amazing. Sadly, I cannot go into it now, mainly because when it's rained, they close it. And today, surprisingly, it's rained. Oh, Tracy, look at the procession with the cross. They came from the first and second station, and I'm happy uh, to see it. They will stop at the third and the fourth station of the Via Dolorosa. The third station, right there where the soldiers are, that's where he fell for the second time. The fourth uh, station is where he met his mother. Not all of the stations, I'm imagining the Bible, but the fifth one soon will, but let us enjoy that ceremony of the Via de Rosa.
This is where Jesus fell for the first time. And that's where he met his mother. Mama, I, I know that I choose the correct path, Tracy, because we actually been blessed by the priest and by the ceremony. And we are walking now with the Muslim disciples that are heading to the Temple Mount to pray to Al-Aqsa Mosque. But we are leaving their path and we continue to the fifth station. Then we are heading to the fifth station and that's where Saint Simon um, help Jesus to carry the cross right here. What Saint Simon is doing in the city, Tracy, uh, Saint Simon came to here because there are three times a year that every Jew must be in the city. Three Jewish festivals that God told them to do, to be here. That's the only place to pray, the Jewish temple. And in that case, you can see the Via Dolorosa sign and the fifth station, and you can see even the image of, of, of Simon who helped Jesus to carry the cross. It's important for us because this is one of the stations that were mentioned in the Bible. And according to what we believe, he was living here, and you can see the left handprint of his hand, and I'm blessing it for you and we will continue with the Via della Rosa through the Church of the Holy Sepulchre. They lately renovated the floor then we can walk without any problem. We're heading to the 6th and the 7th station. The 6th and the 7th station are very important uh, uh, stations of the 14 Via della Rosa stations. The sixth one. Um, San Veronica was standing, which is right there, while she was watching Jesus and Saint Simon walking up. That was in April, like a um, few weeks ago. And Jesus was sweating. And guess what's happening here? Crazy word. It's raining today. It's supposed to be hot, although I prefer the cold weather. Then she asked herself, should I clean his sweat? Clean his sweat. And she did it. She took a chance because she knew that if she will do that, he might crucify her too. I'm talking about the Romans. I don't know what's happened to her. But for me, it's a brave thing to do, to think about. Uh, how was your father? His father was... Uh, his father was... I think something happened to his hand. I think he fell and broke his hand. Then let's pray that everything is okay. And this is the sixth station. That's where St. Veronic. So, Jesus. Let's bless the cross here. See the word Veronica. Let's take a picture of it. Wow, it's totally empty. We're climbing up. With Jesus, with the blessing of Saint Veronic, with Saint Simon, a Jew from Libya who helped Jesus. And on the way, although he couldn't drink, he didn't eat, he didn't drink, you will see between the six and the seven station of the cross, you will see a man that will look at his telephone and, and then you will see his smile. 
morning. Stop here and enjoy one of the best, if not the best, uh, Jerusalem coffee. Thank you. And to talk, morning. yeah. Welcome to Jerusalem. Yeah, to talk with us. such an amazing guy. from Jerusalem. Hallelujah. Then remember El Mufti, that's the name of the coffee place. Thank you. Bye. <laughs> See you. Seventh station. That's where he fell for the second time, but there's more. According to what we believe, he left the city there. And you see that the end of that street is uh, the end of the city from the time of Jesus. Then, from that moment, from the seventh station, everything was outside the city. Remember, Jesus was crucified out of the city, out of the city walls. And when he reached the seventh station, the path, the road from right to left, that's the second option that I could use. Remember, entering Damascus Gate, I had two options. You go a little bit to the right, or to take the left, the eastern corridor. The right one is the main corridor, the main street. Corridor from the word, the heart. And if we're talking about angels, this is an angel, Yoav, Yoav Malachi. Hello, we're next to station number seven where Jesus fell under the cross, and more important, next to station number eight, over here, is the, where the ladies cry, and he said, don't cry for me. Argentina. Cry for yourself and for your children. True, true, true. Don't true. cry for me, Jerusalem. Yeah. yeah. And this is his name, Peron, yeah, um, his name is Malachi, which is angel. And he is an angel. Is he this an is, angel is, or not? Uh, this is my friend, Sam Shaked. <laughs> very well, very, very, very. Uh, if you want to see Israel on, on, online, look for his name, all Israel. Which you won't, uh, won't find it anyhow because it's so difficult to pronounce. But he can give it to you later on. See you. And you are part of the video now. <laughs> See you. Can I? We are entering the seventh station. Excuse me. And because the chapel is open, then uh, here it is. That's where Jesus fell for the second time. But more than that, we just outside the city. And you can see here a column, you will see it soon, from second century, when the Romans built a cardo. And at the fourth century, they built a church. It is, it's in Sido. Come on, please. And Malachi, the angel, talked about the eighth station. And guess what? The sun is here. We started with the rain. And now the sun is here. I can smell the falafel. Oh, I can smell the hummus. I'm not hungry. I'm starving. I started the day at 4 a.m. I took the first train to Jerusalem. Uh, to take those videos and I'm so happy that I'm doing it it gives me a lot of energy and here it is the 8th station that's where the ladies of Jerusalem saw Jesus and wept and he said of course don't cry on me because of me. Cry because the future of yours is going to be horrible. The Via del Rosa started at, this Via del Rosa route started at the 14th century. Then um, there's so many houses that were built in between, and that's why we have to make some detours.
and we're still keeping the main street. But soon we're going to leave it. We're going to climb up to the roof of uh, the Church of the Holy Sepulchre to see the ninth station where Jesus fell for the third time. And then we will enter the church to see to visit the crucifixion place and the tomb of Jesus. Tracy, we are still following you. So many good sweets, Arabic sweets. It's difficult to know exactly where we are leaving the road. Always remember him and then drink before you enter into the church. You can buy us a bottle of water and um, lemonade and Tamar Hindi, which I love. But always remember his smile. No, no, thank you. I cannot hold it, but thank you very much. And then you will see the stairs. This is the way up to the uh, church. Thank you very much. At the 4th century, the church started here. But you might recognize the Coptic Orthodox Patriarch sign. We we'll climb up. Hey, hello. <laughs> Another amazing tour guide. Uh, a German one. And if you need a German tour guide, a uh, tour guide, she is absolutely lovely. Send me a message and I will send you our telephone number or website link. It's sunny and it's not raining and I'm happy. Look at the blue sky here. Ha ha! Then the church started there in the 4th century, built by St. Helen, but today the church is only half of it. You can see the two grey domes of the Church of the Holy Sepulchre. And soon we will see the ninth station, but we just entered to the Christian quarter. The other side is the end of the Muslim quarter, and there you can see grey sky and a white dome. That is the Jewish quarter, it's a synagogue. Then from here you can see the three of the four neighborhoods uh, of Jerusalem. We're entering now to the Coptic part of the church, the Egyptian. And uh, a few weeks ago, you could celebrate um, Easter time with them and it was such colorful, noisy, but lovely, beautiful people from Egypt, mostly them, mostly from Egypt. Behind the door is the Ethiopian neighborhood, which are not less beautiful. Now, you can understand there's something happening here. The Church of the Holy Sepulchre belongs to everyone. It's not like your church belongs only to you. Then it's Catholic, Greek, Orthodox, Armenians are uh, holding most of the church, but the Egyptian, the Copt, and the uh, Sabranic church, and, uh, and more, they have rights there too. Now, that mattress belonged to Saint Guy. If you are following my videos, you saw Jacob, uh, James, a yeah, guy from America that walks and lives like Jesus lived in, um, in the Holy Land. He's walking without shoes. Um, he dressed like, um, let's say, the 12th. And he sleeps here under the sky, under the sun, under the sky. It's unbelievable. 
He's got no property at all except of his clothes. Then if not, look at my previous videos, and I'm sure in the future you will see Yaakov as well. Such an amazing guy. Then the Coptic area is in front of you, but we are going back. We forgot the ninth station of a cross. And I will tell you exactly why I forgot it. This is the ninth station of the cross. That's where Jesus fell for the third time, the last time. The rest of the uh, stations are inside the Church of the Holy Sepulchre. I'm still used to talk about that column as the ninth station of the cross. And that's why I almost missed that one. If you will go through that Coptic amazing church, Queen Helen Church, you will reach to one of the water systems. You will have to pay something attention because I'm, uh, it's still functioning. It's such an amazing place to visit. Then if it's open, go and do that. But we are entering, we are leaving the Coptic Egyptian part and we're entering to the Ethiopian part of the church. This is the roof of the Church of the Holy Sepulchre. Soon, when we actually leave that place, through two Ethiopian churches, you, we will reach the facade, the well-known facade of the Church of the Holy Sepulchre, and you will see that it might be crowded, at least more crowded than here. The Ethiopian believes that they are a creation of a meeting between Queen Shiva and, uh, and um, King Solomon. And here you can see a village, Ethiopian village. The um, tree that you see here is the place that, according to the Ethiopians, it's an olive tree. Um, Abraham almost sacrificed Isaac. My name is Tzachi Shaked, but it's actually Isaac. Then let's go through amazing, two amazing Ethiopian churches. But that was um, Crusader room, or maybe even the dining room. He's so now an Egypt, Egyptian monk. Then let's go. I will be quiet, but you will see that the church is actually divided into two the Holy of the Holy, which they believe that. The Ten Commands and the Ark, Ark of the Covenant is in Ethiopia, then this kind of a replica, and the place the people are praying. Now, what's happening here? A few weeks ago, the Armenian Greek Orthodox and the Catholic decided to renovate the floor of the church. Then the first thing that they will do, they will excavate beneath it. You cannot see a thing here. They didn't do that yet. Because I'm trying to show you what you can see now. And then they will, I don't know what they're going to do, if they're going to replace it or not, but some of the stones here are modern, some of the stones are from the time of the Crusader. And the facade that you see here is in front of you, of the church, is from the end of the 11th and the beginning of the 12th century, Crusader times. Here, they stripped Jesus from his clothes. This is the tent station of the cross. And we are now entering the church. There are a million things to see here, but today we're going to do that quickly. 
we're just going to bless the places. And you can actually watch my videos of the Church of the Holy Sepulchre. Some of them are even more than one hour. We're climbing the Golgotha, the Calvary. Noisy here now. Remember the chapel that we saw the tent station? There it is. We are blessing it for you to trace it. And here they nailed Jesus into the cross. I think you can imagine then that Jerusalem cross, which is unique to Jerusalem, is priceless. Here is the Pietà. You will see Mary with a spear in her heart, in the way Mary holding the dead body of her son. <laughs> Excuse me, please. This is the Golgotha, the Calvary. That is the bedrock that Jesus was crucified on. You can see the cross in front of you. John and the mother. While well, Jesus was on the cross, and guess what? It's 12 o'clock and he is on the cross. He has John to take care of his mother. Then let me show it to you from the Greek Orthodox part. The church is empty compared to regular times. Here it is. That part belongs to the Greek Orthodox. Other chapel to the Catholic. And let's leave the Golgotha. We're heading to the tomb of Jesus. And we saw the crucifixion place. And after he died. They put a lint in and purified his body. And the place that they did it was in front of him. That's where the naked body of Jesus touched and I could have blessed the cross there as well. And from the um, from the Armenian chapel of the three Marys that were looking at the crucifixion, we are moving to the tomb. Now the tomb is supposed to be a cave, but that cave has been destroyed so many times. And what you see here is a tikula, kind of a chapel. The chapel is divided into two. The first room is where you see the light there. It's where the angels took care that no one would steal the body of Christ. The inner room is the tomb itself. Sadly, I cannot go with the camera. Then uh, Tracy, I will do it. In about, let's see, let's see how many people there are. Oh, wait a minute, it'll take me more than 20 minutes to wait in the line, but I will glass it inside the tomb. 
Tracy, this is your tour. If you want to subscribe my uh, my uh, channel, I will be more than happy. If you want to buy yourself your own cross or your own Bible, or to support my channel, go into the link of buy me a coffee or um, PayPal and do that. If you won't find it in the description, send me a link, send me a question, I will send you a link. Just before, just before, don't go away, don't go away. I felt that I must take you to the 15th station of the 14th station of the Via del Rosa. Mainly because I felt like I need to do that. Now there's no 15, there aren't any. I mean the 15th station is not exist in the Via del Rosa, the only 15 or 14, but this is Sunday for me. And this is important for me. You can see Mary Magdalene on Sunday. She was standing there. Jesus was standing there and she was looking for the body of Jesus. Did you see, did you take my, uh, the body of my Lord, she said, to the gardener. But he answered, I am the Lord. Then thank you very much for being with me. I'll see you in my next video. Bye bye.